The Girl on the Train I was travelling by train to Dehradun. It was a first-class compartment and up to Rampur. I was alone in it. Then a girl got on. The couple seeing her off were probably her parents. They seemed very anxious about her comfort and safety. The woman gave the girl detailed instructions as to how she should bear herself during the journey. She told her where to keep her things so that they were not lost. She bade her not to lean out of the window. Particularly, she asked her to avoid speaking to strangers. As I was blind, I could not tell what the girl looked like. But I knew she wore slippers from the way they slapped against her heels. She laughed as she talked and I liked the sound of her voice. Are you going to Dehradun? I asked her as the train pulled out of the station. I must have been sitting in a dark corner because my voice startled her. She gave a little exclamation and said, I didn't know anyone else was here in the compartment. I too didn't see you at first, I said, but I heard you come in. I wondered if I could be able to prevent the girl from discovering that I was blind. I thought to myself, If I keep to my seat, she won't perhaps know of it. I am getting down at Saharanpur, the girl said. My aunt shall come to receive me at the station. Where are you going? To Dehradun and then to Masuri. I replied. Oh, lucky you, exclaimed the girl. I wish I too were going to Masuri. I love the mountains, especially in October. Yes, this is the best time. I said, recalling my memories when I could see. The hills are covered with beautiful wild flowers. It is pleasant during the day and the sun is delicious. At night, you can sit in front of a log fire and drink a little brandy. She didn't say anything in reply. For quite a while, there was silence. I wondered if my words had offended her. Perhaps she was thinking of me as a romantic fool. Then I made a mistake. What is it like outside? I asked. This question did not surprise her. Had she noticed that I couldn't see? But I felt reassured when she asked quite naturally, Why don't you look out of the window? I moved easily along the berth and felt for the window ledge. The window was open and I faced it. I made a pretense of studying the landscape. In my mind's eye, I could see the telegraph post flashing by. Have you noticed? I said with confidence. That the trees seem to be moving while we seem to be still. That always happens, she said. I turned from the window and faced the girl. For a while, we sat in silence. You have an interesting face, I commented. I was becoming quite daring, but it was a safe remark. Few girls would mind anything said in their praise. She laughed pleasantly. It was a clear, ringing laugh. It's nice to be told that, she said. I'm so tired of people telling me that I have a pretty face. So, you do have a pretty face, I said to myself. And then I said aloud, Well, an interesting face can be a pretty face also. You are very witty, she said. Have you a watch? What time is it? We'll be soon at your station, I replied. Thank goodness, it's a short journey, she said. I can't bear to sit in a train for more than two or three hours. But I was prepared to sit there with her for any length of time. I could never be tired of listening to her talking. Her voice had the sparkle of mountain brook. As soon as she left the train, she would forget our brief encounter but its sweetness would stay with me for the rest of the journey. All my present thoughts were centered round her. The engine gave a whistle. The carriage wheels changed their sound and rhythm. The girl got up to collect her things. 
I wondered if she wore her hair in a bun or if she had a ponytail. I wondered if it hung down loose over her shoulders or if it was cut very short. The train drew slowly into the station. Outside there was the shouting of porters and vendors. A high-pitched female voice was heard near the carriage door. It must have been the girl's aunt there. Goodbye, said the girl. She was standing very close to me. She was so close that I could smell the perfume from her hair. I stood up from my seat. I wanted to raise my hand and touch her hair, but she moved away. Only the perfume still lingered where she had stood. There was some confusion in the doorway. A man who was getting into the compartment spoke some words in apology. Then the door banged shut and I turned to my berth. The guard blew his whistle and the train moved off. Slowly the train gathered speed. The wheels took up their song. The carriage groaned and shook. I found the window and sat in front of it. I started staring into the daylight that was darkness for me. Once again, I had a game to play and a new companion. I am sorry, said the passenger, trying to make conversation. I am not as attractive a companion as the one who just left. She was an interesting girl, I said. Can you tell me whether she had long hair or short? I didn't notice, he replied, sounding puzzled. It was her eyes I noticed, but not her hair. She had such beautiful eyes, but they were of no use to her. She was completely blind. Didn't you notice?